Hello, ladies and gentlemen. This is Wednesday's art enrichment video, and this week's theme is 3D. Today is going to connect with Thursday, and Thursday is going to connect with Friday. Friday, I'm going live here on YouTube, and I want to see you guys here with me. Uh, so today, we are going to be making a box and in that box we are going to be making ripply water and we're going to be making sand at the bottom of that box. As I said, today's um, goes with Thursdays and Fridays, so today's might seem kind of basic, but it's the start of a project that's going to take us three more, uh, two more days to do. Alright guys, let's get you flipped over and show you how to make this box. So here are all the materials I will be needing for this project. The number one thing you're going to be needing is a box of some sort. My box is actually pretty small. It is a five inch, yep, five inch box by probably about eight inches. Um, a small shoe box will do, an Amazon package box will do, um, a food box that you don't need anymore. All you have to do is cut off the front side of it. But you are definitely going to need a box. And towards the end of the video, I will show you a way to do this without even having a box. And I'll show you how to make a triangle out of paper. Okay, so box. You're going to need colored construction paper. I have uh, three different colors of blue and I have yellow. You're definitely going to need scissors to cut the construction paper. A ruler is optional. It always helps. You're definitely going to need some kind of glue to glue it down. A pencil to help you draw lines will be helpful. And then this is completely optional. You do not have to have any of this. This will just give us a really cool texture thing to the sand and to the water. So if you have paints, grab the paints. If you don't have paints, I can show you how to do it with a marker and a paintbrush and water. Um, if you don't have any of this stuff, don't worry about it. You could just use a marker or crayons or you can skip the step completely. Remember, your artwork looks like your artwork. It does not have to look like my artwork. All right, let's get this cleaned up a little bit. Definitely not going to need any of this stuff for right now. Set that all aside. Oh, and I also have a paper towel down here. This is um, with the paint. This is how I'm going to dab it on. All right. Glue. Keep it handy. And the first step is going to be cutting off these extra flaps we don't need. Now, if you want, you can actually leave this flap on here. I'm not going to, but you can, and that way you can have stuff spilling out. Um, water spilling out, sand spilling out, it's up to you. It's something cute you can do, but I'm gonna cut mine off. All right, so if all you can get a hold of is a cereal box, then I suggest you cut out the front of the cereal box and you keep the tabs there and you glue the tabs back together. All right, so everybody's box is gonna look different. I can only show you what mine is going to be. So clean up as you go. Uh, keep everything nice and handy. I am going to actually start off with the water and I want water on the top, the sides, and most of the back of the box. And then on the bottom of my box, I'm going to put yellow. But if you guys see, I tested out different techniques to make it look more like sand. I'll show you how I do that here in a minute. So I think I've told you guys this before. Uh, when the sun is hitting the water, the top of the water is the lightest. And as you travel further down in the ocean, the water is getting what? Darker. Okay, so the water is getting darker. So I'm going to start off with my light blue. If all you have is one blue color, just put that blue color in here. Hopefully you have markers or crayons or paints and you can help transition the color as well. I could just do light blue 
and paint it if I wanted to. But since I have all of these different things, I might as well use them. Okay, so step number one is I measure this part, and so I know that the top panel needs to be this long. So I crease it. That's how long it is. And then I'm going to measure, and I need it to be five and a quarter. Get that out of the way. Measure down two times. Five and a quarter. And on this side, five and a quarter. Okay. This is where my little ruler gets me at a disadvantage. Just grab the straw thing again. And this piece um, does not have to fit in there perfectly. Actually, now that I'm thinking about it, I do want it to come down the sides a little bit. So I want to go ahead and add even more length to it. See, you can always change your mind. So I'm adding about another two-ish inches to it. Draw a new line going up. The way I make sure that this line is straight is I use the bottom of the ruler on my straight line down here, which means I'm going to have a 90 degree square right here. Sorry, I know on camera it's a little bit difficult to see my pencil line. I might switch over to a pen. Tijeras! I lost my tijeras. Oh, here they go. They were underneath my yellow paper. Okay, cut. So remember, I wanted this to be slightly bigger. And you guys see how it kind of comes down my edges a little bit. So what I want to do now is I'm going to push it firmly, increase it in, push it firmly. I'm just using my fingers and I'm giving it little creases so that it'll want to stay in there. Okay, art teacher hack. Take this piece of paper. I can tell that it is not quite tall enough um, to help me cover the back. Besides, I don't want to cover the whole back anyway. Um, what I want to do is get about an inch. Sorry, the gears are turning. So again, measure across the top. And all I have to do is cut down a little bit and cut across. And again, it does not need to be perfect. Okay, so first I'm going to glue this one in. Glue on the outer edge. Make sure you keep it kind of thin. The thinner it is, the better it will stick to the box and the faster it will stick. But you also have to make sure that you use enough glue that you're covering it everywhere. There's a give and take. All right, smooth it down, flip it this way. Okay, there is the top of my box. Now I want to do the back. Overlapping is completely fine. All we're looking to do is to cover this. If you have some really good paint at home that's not like watercolor paint, but it's like an acrylic paint or it's a um, tempera paint, if you just want to paint the inside of your box instead of covering it with paper, you can also do that. That's totally fine. I do not have any of those kind of paints here at my house. They're all at the school. Ah, fun times. All right, now I am ready for my medium blue. 
Do I throw this guy away? That's right. No, because we are paper superheroes and we are going to help save this paper for another project. Okay, so this one, we're going to need a lot less paper. I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut, this is my long 18 by 12 paper. I'm just going to cut a full strip all the way and then I'm going to start here and glue it down have it come across and whatever sticks out after I'm done I'll just cut away. Alright so I just cut a full strip of that medium blue paper, put it starting here, overlapping that light blue, creasing it with my fingernails, oh plan foiled. That's okay. Now I just need to go back and I need to grab a little bit more because this piece wasn't even long enough. But again, no big deal. Just cut another little strip. But this time it doesn't have to be the whole strip. Just long enough that it's going to overlap and stick out. There we go. Let's get this one glued in. Okay, so when I'm sticking this in here, I'm making sure I'm overlapping the light blue color because I don't want any of my cardboard box to show through. Now for my extra little piece. Now notice I did not put glue on all of it. I left this top part without glue because that's going to be sticking up and I want to cut that off. And this way, voila, there's no glue on that piece of paper to stick to me or to my scissors. There we go. And now for my last one, I can do the exact same thing with my darkest blue. This time, however, I'm going to fold it so that I get a nice even strip. And now I know the strip is not going to be long enough. I'm going to fold it a second time. That way I have another strip right here and I know how to cut. So you might be thinking, Miss O'Keefe, you didn't get it all the way to the bottom of the box. I did that on purpose. I want to have my yellow paper there coming up to look like the sand isn't just down here, but it's up a little bit. Let's get this one glued in. There we go. There are my transitions of water. I'm not gonna leave it like that, but you can if you want to. I'm gonna give it a sponging technique, which is gonna make it look more like under the water. Okay, so I'm gonna do the bottom sand in this yellow. You do not have to do yellow. If you have a tan color, that would be even better. Or if you have like a beigeish, whitish color, that would be awesome too. Because when I was looking at um, pictures of the ocean, it didn't really have yellow sand unless if you were looking at a cartoon. But this is the color paper that I have at my house, so this is what I'm going to be using. Now I'm going to make this one exactly like I made this one up here. So I'm just going to fast forward through this. Okay. 
There we go. Now I have the inside of my box covered with construction paper. Um, if this is where you want to stop, that is fine. Just know that today we are not adding any kind of fishes. We're not adding any kind of um, sea creatures of any kind or any coral. I'm going to do that on Friday during my live with the Play-Doh that I make. So this is all about the ocean water and the ocean floor. I'm going to do one more extra step here that I think is really going to make it um, pop just that much more. You do not have to do the step if you do not have the supplies. So I'm going to be using a paper towel and I'm going to be um, using my watercolor paints. If you don't have watercolor paints, let me show you what you can do. You can take a washable marker and um, color on any kind of waxy surface. It doesn't have to be something hard and plastic. It could be a disposable paper plate. It could be wax paper. It could be anything that marker is not going to stick to. So color, 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 color. And then you can take a paintbrush or you can take paper towel. It's up to you. Get your paper towel wet. Here's my water. Put it in the washable paint, uh, I'm sorry, washable marker, and I'm using a sponge technique where I'm just going bloop, 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 bloop. And this is creating um, more interest into my sand, and it's going to give me a not so quite yellow sand. It's going to help tint it. Um, this marker is pretty light. I actually like this brown color a little bit more. So, new piece of paper towel, brush, brown paint, put it right here, water, wash my brush, And then I'm going to take this paper towel. You see how it's all like frayed edges? I'm going to do this. Bloop, bloop. Bloop, bloop, bloop. And I'm just going to blot random places. And um, if you get too much color, just uh, go back and use less water. So I'm having a little bit of a hard time getting it right here in the creases. So I'm going to come in with my paintbrush, get a little bit, and then I'm going to dry my paintbrush a lot on my paper towel. Get just pure color. Now I can gently stab with my paintbrush as well. This just gives me perfect little circles, and I wasn't wanting perfect little circles. All right, so there's my sand texture. I could go over it again. I could use an orange color. I could do whatever I wanted to that. Um, what I want to do now is using my paintbrush, I want to make more ripply lines in the water to make it really look like water is flowing in this box. So my light blue. Up there too. What would really help is if you used a small brush or if you could vary which brushes you use. I happen to have a small brush. Also, do you notice how I'm holding the back of the brush and I'm spinning it? Okay. And then I don't have to just stay on my light layer. I can bring this color down into my darker layer. Or I could even sponge it with this as well. I want to see what that looks like. To my little medium blue. Just trying to break it up so it doesn't all look the same. Looks like we're in the water and there's light reflecting everywhere.
And I'm even going on to my light color as well and doing my paper towel stippling. The key really is not too much water. More paint than water. Hmm. For my darkest blue color. I'm not really liking this because it's giving me more of a dot. I want it to be more wrinkles. There we go. Now it doesn't look like perfect water. It looks like there's light and it's reflecting in there. I'm having lots of fun doing this. I hope you do too. Remember, you don't have to do this paint step if you just want to leave it at the paper or if you just want to paint the inside of the box. But this is all you need to do for Wednesday. And then Thursday, we are going to make some homemade Play-Doh. And then on Friday, I'm going to show you how to turn that Play-Doh into things that live in the ocean. I hope you guys are enjoying this 3D week as much as I am. And I hope to see you guys at my live. So I totally forgot to show you guys, if you don't have a box, how to make a triangle that you can put the stuff into. Grab a blue piece of paper or whatever you have, fold it, just like an origami, like we want to make a square. Cut your edge. You want to fold it again. There you go. Open it up. And we are going to cut just one of these lines. Not all of them, just one. So right here, I'm going to cut all the way up. It's right here. And then when I crisscross this over, refold that line, and bam, you have yourself a triangle. Just give it a little bit of glue, and it'll hold itself nice and tight. Doop. Doop. And now you can add your sand down here and you can paint everything here and you can add your coral and your sea star and whatever else we make on Friday. Now I'm going to let you guys go get to work. Happy creating!